I'm Tim Laird with Kevin Harden, and it's time to reveal more secrets of bluegrass chef. Well, you're right about that, Tim. And on today's show, we're revealing the secrets to authentic Italian food. Chef Agostino Gabriele is here from Vincenzo's, a restaurant that's been an icon of Italian food in Louisville for decades. He's going to share a lot of secrets that you can use in your kitchen. Also, Kevin, I'm going to show you an Italian twist to a great cocktail. That's a peach of a cocktail, I must say. Look forward to seeing that. Tim, I'm already hungry, and now you're making me thirsty. What do you say we get started with this edition and reveal the secrets of Bluegrass Chefs? Welcome to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Kevin Harnett, and this time we're cooking authentic Italian food. We're at our home here at Butchertown Market at Bourbon Barrel Foods, and our special guest is Chef Agostino Gabriele from Vincenzo's. He was honored recently to be listed as one of America's top chefs. He comes to Kitchen Studio with more than a half century of cooking experience that spans the globe. And skills that have made Vincenzo's in downtown Louisville a cornerstone for fine dining in Kentucky for decades. On his menu today, authentic Italian pasta and Ville Saltimbocca, all served with the secrets to making these dishes yourself. We'll get to the cooking in just a second, but please say hello to America's Chief Entertaining Officer and my co-host, Tim Lair. Hello, Kevin! Hello, Timmy. Wow, look at this. What a great audience, too. I mean, it is awesome. And a packed house. I know, it's, and a chef. I'll tell you what, Agostino, one of the best. I'll tell you what, well, what an experience, too, going down to Vincenzo's. He knows how to bring out the crowd, that's for sure, whether it's here at our studio or in his restaurant. Vincenzo's has a name that we all know. It's a classic, and it's wonderful. And I'll tell you what, Agostino always has some great stories to tell from the old country and how he's brought some uh, excellent food, uh, authentic Italian food, right here to Louisville. Well, great food and great people. He and his brother, Vincenzo have been around Louisville a long time. I'm ready to get started. I am too. All let's right, Kevin, let's get started. All right. It's a great day to be in Kitchen Studio because we have a wonderful audience. Yes, okay, we do. Awesome. Without further ado, here he is, Chef Agostino. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Oh, good, good, good morning. morning. Kevin, good to see you. Chef, good to see you. Good to see you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, folks. Thank you. I'll good. tell you what. They love you. Oh. And they love your food. Thank you. Augustino, how long have you been uh, at Vincenzo's? 31 years. 31 years. 31. And I'll tell you what, it's such a classic place. Every time you go in, you just feel comfortable. It's like everyone's family and all the guests that come in. Part of your family, which yes. is wonderful. Yes. And uh, how did you get started cooking? My mother introduced me to the fresh food, fresh ingredients, you know, the wonderful home homemade pasta. You know, she made everything from scratch. There was no can in my house in, inside the cabinets. Everything, she would go every morning to the market and she would pick only the things that she need for the day. And then when I was 14 years old, I went to do an apprentice. You know, I started peeling potato, carrots, and go to school too. And I said, I think I like this place. I like this, I like this job better than the school. So I, fin I finished my high school and I went back to the restaurant because I enjoy cooking and also eating too, you know. Then I went to work places all over Europe. I went to work in Dusseldorf, in Germany. I work in Milan, I work in Grosseto. I work in Palermo too. And uh, you know, I work with a lot of different chefs. And it's my passion. It's my life. And what we I'm, love about that, Augustino, is you brought all that passion right here to Louisville for us. So uh, we I'm can share that idea. global experience that you've had all over Europe and cooking in all these fine restaurants. And, and certainly now we have that here. And we have been in business 31 years. So I guess the team works. Something's yeah. working, right? It's working. No, it's Something's great. Kick on. Well, Augustino, what are we going to cook today? What's, today uh, what are we starting out with? We're going to start it with the veal. Oh. Veal saltimbocca. The, the veal is to be fresh not frozen, veal fresh. The white wine, the butter, you know, all those things. Fresh herbs. This is the sage. I don't use any dry herbs. Dry herbs is not as good as the fresh herbs. So that's one secret that I give you. It's very important. Okay, now we turn the pan on. All right. I got two, two wonderful 
chefs here to help me? <laughs> yeah, whatever you need. You just tell me. Yeah, yeah, as long right. as it's not too complicated, past a yeah. spoon, spoon or fork, and no. I'm, I'm to good. To saute the, the veal, you can only <laughs> saute two different ways, either in butter or in extra virgin olive oil. I prefer the butter because the butter, when I finish to saute the, the veal, what we're going to do, we're going to prepare the sauce in the same pan. Oh, so, so it's going to be flavored. Uh, yes, yeah, that... so all the flavor goes into the sauce. And oh, and then we have a little uh, dredging. Uh... Yes, we dredge in flour. Anything else in the flour or just? Uh... In flour, what you do, you put a little salt and a little pepper. Okay. You would do like this. And then right into the hot butter. Right here. Oh. We'll do three slices. When you saute the veal, you don't want to keep flipping. You only let it cook on one side for less than a minute, and then you flip to the other side. Oh, because, yeah, look at it. It yeah. starts to get the little brown crust on that one side. Right. Well, That's the thing. I'm not patient enough. You know, I always want to flip it and flip it. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> That's why you want a glass oh, see, of wine can, or something, or a, a bourbon uh, to <laughs> sip on while you put it in. And it'll just slow you down a little bit. It works for me. Yeah. So you can feel, you know, when it's uh... well, and plus it, it's so thin that it doesn't take long at all to uh, no, cook. Not That's at the all. other secret. Already, that smells great. Oh. So you slice. Now in the same sauce, what we do, we put some sage, some fresh carrots, pinch of salt, mm. pinch of pepper. Some white Italian wine. Yeah. Yeah. Pinot Grigio. Pinot Grigio. You can use anything you have in the in your, in your refrigerator, you know, you don't have to go buy the wine. If you have Pinot Grigio, use Pinot Grigio, as long as it's white. <laughs> if you have a Chardonnay, use a Chardonnay. It's already reducing down pretty quickly. Right. Though. Now, after I do this, I add some veal stock. Ah, okay. See, that's uh, what makes the food is herbs, the fresh ingredients and the veal stock. All the stock, if you, you know, if you do some chicken, you do, use the chicken stock. If you're doing some fish, use some fish stock. Starting to thicken up? Yeah, so thicken it up. See, as you can see, we did not use a lot of butter. It's got the white wine. Just now, enough. We got the juice from the veal, and it's going back here. I'll put it right back in the pan. Because that's the flavor. As you know, saltimbocca, it's got to have a prosciutto, Italian prosciutto, which is cured Italian ham, right? So you get a sliced prosciutto, and you place it over the top. They get very thinly sliced. Yes, yes, very thin. And you place over the top. Now this is, the veal saltimbocca, usually it's veal, prosciutto, sage, and the, and the sauce, and the white wine. But I came up with a different, you know, I like to do little different things. I put a slice of... Oh, mozzarella? Yes. And you put this over here on top of the veal. Remember, this got to have the sage, the fresh sage over the top. Nothing dried, Kevin. No. It's all fresh. No, 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 no. He dry. makes this look so easy. But <laughs> I know. Look at that. And look how beautiful this presentation is coming out. By the time you come Oh, that looks great. Wow. Once we reach this point, and you bake for one minute. Oh. At 350. So you give it time for the mozzarella to melt a little bit on top of the veal. Hmm. And it's... Perfect. And plus, that'll crisp up the uh, prosciutto, prosciutto a little bit. Prosciutto, yes. Oh, yes. there it is. There it is. Wow. That's one round down, but we're not finished yet. Augustino with Vincenzo's is coming back after the break, and we've got something else to prepare. Yes. 
we do some ravioli next. Oh, oh, oh I can't wait for that. Ravioli and Tim, you're, you're making a classic cheese. Italian cocktail. I am. We got that coming up when we come back on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Thank you. Oh, oh doesn't that look great? Is this Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. This is the show that takes you out to eat behind the scenes and into the minds of the area's great chefs like Agostino Gabrielli, who is here from Vincenzo's. And today he has prepared some Vilsoth and Boca. And we have Angela Ballard here. It's nice to see you from Bardstown. I happen to be fond of that area. Well, it's a wonderful place to live. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You're a big Italian foodie? I love uh, Vincenzo's. It's wonderful food, and I love Italian, so uh, it's pretty exciting to try this. Have you had the Vilsanth Boca? I don't think that's what I had the last time I was there. Yeah, try it. I want to see how it is. So we always ask a studio audience member to come up, take a taste, kind of be the judge, if you will, and um, we'll see what Angela says. Wonderful. Delicious? Wonderful, delicious, yes. It's tender. Tender, very tender. And, and of course, they put the sage on top, says, don't forget that. Does and that add anything? The seasoning was wonderful. So. Awesome. <laughs> Well, that is yours to take back and enjoy with the uh, folks that you have here. So we will all be able to take a taste at the conclusion of the show. But Angela, thanks for being here from Bardstown. Appreciate that. Watch your step there. Tim Laird, come back in. You have <laughs> you, know, you, you, you gave her food away. There was, there was three slices on there. Well, she was eyeing the glasses, and I said, well, she can either take that or the glasses. Oh, okay, so good, I, I went with that. Good call. Good call, <laughs> Kevin. All right. I've got a, a, an Italian twist to a classic. It's, uh, of course, the peach bellini. Very simple to make, very delicious. Uh, starting out with about uh, four ounces of Corbel uh, Brut that's in my glass. To that, some fresh peach nectar okay. goes in. So a little bit of that. You don't need a lot, just, uh, just to give it a little peach flavor to it. And then my little twist, I like to use, uh, I found these peach bitters, nice. which makes a nice cocktail, kind of a secret ingredient, like Chef said. Just a couple of dashes of that, top it off with a peach slice, and even not in season, you can buy the frozen peach slices. Right. And I keep them frozen, and actually will help chill your Bellini as you go. So with that, nice. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Wow. Ain't wow. That, ain't that a peach? That is a peach of a good. cocktail. Let me tell you. That's good. And peach is one of my favorites. Bellini. Where does that come from? Uh, chef uh, Bellini. Bellini was uh, is uh, no Italy. Okay. From no Italy. Northern, Northern Italy. Italy. Now we know. Very there good. Go. Let's All jump right. back in. We have not finished cooking. It's Augustine ravioli here. time. I understand. Yes. Chef, where yes. do we start first? Well, we're gonna do the the pasta. First, we're gonna do the dough. And again, everything's me, fresh. At yes. Vincenzo's. Yes. This is a double zero uh, flour. You can use a whole purpose flour. And what you do, you try to make a little hole in the middle, like this. And uh, since it's homemade ravioli, we use the eggs. So we use the, here we have a 500 grams. So for 500 grams, you use five eggs. We also need a pinch of salt, dry in the milk. What else we need? Can you, you tell please me. pass me the olive oil? Olive oil? Olive oil, extra it is. virgin olive oil. Just about That's that it. much. Okay, and then what you do, you try to break the eggs, and bring some of the flour into the eggs. So you're slowly incorporating the yeah, flour incorporate the into flour, the egg. Right. Like this. Because we not, remember, we're not going to use water. Just oh. the liquid, that only, the only liquid that we use is the eggs. And the mistake I've made, you know, I, I put too much of the flour already, you know, and then it gets lumpy. So this is just a little bit at a time, right? Right, a little just bit Just keep at incorporating time. a little more. Okay, once you do this, then you got to use your hands. All right. The, then you got the dirty part. You know, you got to make sure that... You can't get those at Williams-Sonoma. <laughs> <laughs> now it's the mixing. Here comes the blender right now. It's Here's the that. handy tool. It's the handy yes. tool. <laughs> the flour is absorbing all the, the eggs. And no water. And no water. Now, once you reach this point, you know, you got to work with your hands. And so after working with your hands. You cover up with the towel. And one hour later, it, 
it rises, so it gets soft. You slice a piece, you try to spread the flour like this, the dough. Oh, yeah. See, I hope you went to trick Bellini, I think. <laughs> <laughs> now, you start from a, a small, small number, okay? Which is number one, number two, number three. So the smaller so the, the number, largest, the wider? Yeah, the wider the, the roll gets. And you do a couple times with the small number. You move the number to four. It has to be a little thinner. So what you do? You go up in numbers. <laughs> <laughs> what That's number are we at now? Uh, eight. Eight. This is kind of a workout, too. Look at this, Kevin. Well, let me tell you, if, if the electrical, it doesn't take this long. <laughs> and okay. you place the first sheet on a board here, on a cutting board. And what you do, put right. the car hard shape. So what we need is you press real hard. But, uh, we have the hearts cut out, but when we come back, we're going to finish up the ravioli. We've got to take a quick commercial break, yes. but the good stuff is yet to come, right? Yes, yes, correct. Don't go away. We're watching Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs with Agostino Gabrielli from Vincenzo's. We're back after this. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs here at Bourbon Barrel Foods in the Butchertown Market. I'm Kevin Harnett alongside Tim Laird. We're learning the secrets from one of Louisville's best, Agostino Gabrielli from Vincenzo's. We've had a lot of fun on We've this show. We've had a lot of fun, and I'll tell you what, we learned how to make pasta. Uh -oh. By the way, that dough can be used for any type of pasta you want, that basic recipe. This time we're yes. going to make raviolis. Yes. Chef's cut out uh, with a heart shape. I like that. Cookie cutter, and uh, mm -hmm. we're and ready for the filling. What is and the filling? And now we're going to, the filling is the lobsters. This consists shallots, deal, fresh, fresh dill, dill, fresh dill, little portobello mushrooms, some uh, carrots, little touch butter, the dry shade here, and uh, little Parmesan cheese. Mm, that looks delicious. That's it. Now so that's we the do, stuffing. That's the stuffing. So the stuffing goes into the pasta, into the dough here like this. Make sure you, you place when you do this. You got to place it right in the center, right in the center, like this. You break one egg, all you do, you need very, very little, and you place it right over here. This is like a, this will glue together. The egg wash will help to stay together. There we go, right on top. Right on top. You need to dip the flour, the fork, in the flour, and with the tip of the flour, you try to make it rich. Oh, like so this. you use the tines to actually pinch it further together. Yes, yes. Plus it makes a nice little design there. This is your girlfriend or your child heart right here. Once you reach mm, this point, it comes like this. Remember that you want to stay, you want to keep it with the flour home so it stays dry. Fresh pasta doesn't take too long to cook. Dry pasta takes seven minutes. The fresh pasta, two, three minutes, it's ready. So those go in? Enough. Yeah. A little boiling the, water? Salt water, when the pasta cooks in salt water, and uh, once it boils it out, you check and see if it's ready. See the difference, the, the one that, she, that I made right now as you can see, the color is real, real white. The one that I made this morning, because he stayed longer, he had time to dry out. So the color is different. I'll put it here so you see the difference. Mm -hmm. Got it. Now, once you do this, 
then you drop to the Chef Kevin sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Voila. Kevin's been slaving over here uh, with his I, wonderful sauce you made. This let me beautiful. tell you what I started with. Carrots okay. and uh, put some vegetables in. Celery, right, Augustino? Yes. And, they, and don't forget the all-important lobster. Lobster, ta mm -hmm. lobster tail shells. Shells. Yeah. Shells. shells. You got carrots, we, we cook celery, them right onions, fresh garlic, bay leaves. You blanch with the dry shade. Then you put some cream, a tablespoon of uh, paste, tomato paste. And then you add a little fish stock and then touch cream. And it comes, the sauce comes this color. And that's a beautiful yes. sauce. And that'll look good. Yes. Color. Secret is, see, you want to cover that. You can kind of see the creaminess, huh? And you garnish with the fresh dill. And there it is. There it is. How about that? From ravioli. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Augustino, thank you for being here. <laughs> we always appreciate having you on Chef, our thank show. Thank you so My much. Pleasure. Oh, My great pleasure. to have you here. Augustino Gabrielli, everybody. Thank you. From Vincenzo's, go down and see Agostino, his brother Vincenzo. It's always a fine place to eat. I love it. Absolutely thank fabulous. Thank you, guys. Always a great time. Tim, we want to thank all of our studio audience that's here, everybody that's home watching, and all of our great sponsors. You've been watching Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. For Tim Laird, I'm Kevin Harnett, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Say mozzarella. Mozzarella. <laughs>